flung into a series of amazing adventures by his impetuous nature and intense hatred of injustice, John Wallace finds himself the possessor of the wonderful Pipes of Death and becomes the Music Master, matching long-forgotten secrets of the ancients against the marvels of modern science as he clashes with that genius of evil, the Mad Fiddler. Entertains the crowd leaving the concert hall. Suddenly! Out of my way, I'm in a hurry! John Wallace, brilliant young concert artist, sees the incident and takes a hand. What's your hurry? Sit down and chat a while. Yo! Poor Paganini, are you hurt? Are you alright? Say, you're, you're Antonini, the violin maker. But why the disguise? Please, not so loud. I had to see you, and I feared an attempt to kidnap me. Will you please take me to your car? Old Papa Antonini in danger. I can't believe it. It's true. I've just made an amazing discovery. The secret varnish formula of the great Stradivari. With it, I can make exact reproductions of his famous violins. But I'm afraid someone knows I have the formula and will try to steal it from me. Hey, look, Joe, that's him. Let's go. As the musicians start to enter Antonini's shop, they are attacked by two thugs. Get the old guy! <laughs> oh! oh no you don't! Give me that fiddlestick, Grandpa! Dropping old Antonini, the second thug lunges at John Wallace using the violin bow as a sword. Oh, this'll fix you, wise guy! Yow! John slumps into Antonini's arms, the violin bow protruding from his chest as the thugs race away into the night. The dirty cowards! Oh, John, John, my poor bambino. Are you hurt badly? The old man drags Wallace into the shop and removes the violin bow, which has penetrated close to John's heart. Almost gone, not a moment to lose. Taking down a small set of pipes, Antonini begins to play an exotic melody, strange and haunting. All through the night he plays, holding the pipes close to John's heart. As dawn breaks, John begins to move. Where? Where? Why is it so dark? Steady, steady, my boy. You have been a long time in the Valley of Darkness. Later, fully recovered, Wallace learns the amazing story of his escape from death. You saved my life, and I have given you a new one. What is this strange melody I feel running through my body? The secret of this ancient Egyptian instrument is a song which creates sound waves that matches exactly the life vibrations of the human body. Your spark of life had almost flickered out, but the melody which is singing through your veins has replaced it. It is now your song of life. The old man explains that John's body has attuned to the frequency of musical sound waves, and that he can identify himself with any musical note, so that his body will react and cling to the waves of sound, and he will be transported with the speed of sound to the source of the music. Later, as Wallace leaves the shop, here, take these for you. They are the pipes of life, but to your enemies and all evildoers, they are the pipes of death. Thanks, Papa. I'll be back tomorrow. The next day, when Wallace returns, he finds old Papa Antonini dead, murdered, and his apprentice unconscious. What? Well, what happened here? I'll find the murderer if it's the very last thing I do. <coughs> Come on, Paganini. There's plenty of work ahead. Several days later, Wallace runs across his first clue. Well, here's a lead peg. Shall we follow up? <coughs> that afternoon, he visits Van Altman at his home. I have come to warn you, sir. I have reason to believe that your find is a clever fake. Bah! You say that so you can buy it later yourself for a song. Get out of here! The moment Wallace leaves, Van Altman reaches for the telephone. Meddlesome fool. I'll see that he doesn't annoy me again. Paganini, old boy, I think we've got something here. Van Altman was altogether too anxious to get rid of us. Looks mighty familiar, too. I wonder where we met before. Back in his apartment, Wallace dons the dead violin maker's frock coat and hangs the mysterious pipes around his neck. How do I look, Peg? Boo! A moment later, a weird sensation comes over him. He becomes the music master, with a fixed determination to avenge the murder of his benefactor. Setting forth, he leaves his house, Paganini trailing slowly behind him. Somehow we'll get to the bottom of this peg, although I'll have to confess I'm stumped right now. Suddenly, 
A long black sedan roars down the street and swerves savagely towards the music master. And there he is, Joe! Get him! Sensing danger, the dog howls shrilly, and the music master is whisked to his side in the nick of time on the musical beam of the sound waves. Hey, he disappeared! Wow, that was close. Thanks, Pag. Those boys meant business. Listen, their horns stuck when they sideswept that light pole. As long as it keeps blowing, I can follow them on the soundtrack at their own speed. The music master again vanishes and blends with the sound waves of the car's horn. After many blocks of undiscovered pursuit, the music master leaves the soundtrack abruptly as the car screeches to a stop in front of a tall apartment house. Come on, Joe, he may have got our number. Assuming his natural form, Wallace gazes up at the building. Hello, who's playing the violin? I wonder... Soaring on the violin notes, the music master traces them to an open window on the sixth floor. So, Antonini's apprentice. Well, this is interesting indeed. What? Who? Oh, Mr. Wallace! Yes, Jimmy, John Wallace. Now perhaps you'll tell me what this is all about. What connection do you have with Papa's murder? N n nothing, Mr. Wallace, honest! It was the m mad fiddler that did it! The mad fiddler! Sneaking quietly into the room, the two thugs jump the music master from behind. Yay! Yeah, got him this time, Joe! Tony! Joe! And as for you, Jimmy, you traitor! Not so fast, my backstabbing friend! Deftly, the music master tosses the first thug over his shoulder. Yeah! And the second reaches for Jimmy. Suddenly, Jimmy turns, shouting. Wait, listen! The radio! It's the mad fiddler! Attention, colleagues! <laughs> this is the one you call the mad fiddler! Your master, your chief! I want to commend the young assistant to the late Antonini for his acquisition of the Stradivari formula. The money from the sale of the violins we are now making will be used to further my plans for a great new order in the world of music. <laughs> that is all. That's all, is it? That's what you think, Mr. Mad Fiddler. I've got a plan or two up my sleeve, too. And I think we'll be meeting again very soon. Come on, Jimmy, you and I are going on a little trip. Before the two thugs can recover from their surprise, the music master places the charmed pipes to his lips, and on the track of the musical notes, dives out the window, dragging the terrified assistant behind him. I think we'll pay a visit to our friend Van Altman again. Help! A few moments later, they enter Van Altman's apartment. Well, Altman, we meet again. Going somewhere? This is a mad fiddler again. Beware of the man who calls himself the music master. <laughs> Say, what kind of a gag is this? Where did you come from? That's not important right now. Jimmy, are these the violins you and the Mad Fiddler have been making? Uh, yes, sir. They're the ones. Why, you you cheap little squealer. Van Altman leaps back, gun in hand. Sir, you're a front for the Mad Fiddler. A fence for him, eh? And what if I am? You'll never live to tell it. As he pulls the trigger, the bullet cracks out and strikes the pipes around Wallace's neck. Yow! It bounced right off him! Unnerved by the futility of his attack, Van Altman dives through the window in mortal terror. Picking himself up outside, Van Altman races for his automobile. That guy's not human. I've got to get out of here, fast! A second later, the music master leans from a window. Pipes of death for the doers of evil, send forth your song! And in Von Ottman's car as he speeds down the street. That, that music! My hands! My arms! I can't move them! Back in the apartment, Van Ottman's butler takes a hand. Look, Mr. Wallace! My master failed, but I shall carry on. You, music master, shall die. A great cage of crackling steel rods is suddenly lowered from the ceiling, surrounding Wallace and Jimmy. Don't touch them, Jimmy. They're high-voltage rods. Is this the end of the Music Master? Will the Mad Fiddler win this uncanny battle with John Wallace? Don't miss the conclusion in an upcoming episode of the Public Domain Comic Book Network. <laughs>